Hello, welcome back again. I hope you had a chance to learn those chords that we learned in the last lesson, the E chord, the A chord and the D chord. And I hope you at least had a chance to practice strumming them and swapping from one chord to the other. Now what I'm going to show you today is a way of strumming with the plectrum which will make your playing sound much more interesting. Because here's the thing, um, when people first learn guitar usually they just strum downwards with the plectrum like this. And that's okay, but after a while, you'll find that that starts to sound quite boring. So what I want to do is give you a more interesting strumming pattern that will make it sound, uh, you know, a lot more alive. And also I'm going to show you a new chord today. It's the G chord. Um, so this strumming pattern is a downstroke, an upstroke, a chop, I'll explain that in a minute, and an upstroke. So when we put that together, it sounds like this. And you can see that it gives it a more interesting sound because the chop is quite percussive. It, to me, it sounds a little bit like a drum kit when the drummer hits the snare. And especially if you're the sort of person that might be, you know, busking on your own or playing acoustic guitar, then it's really going to be useful for you to get used to this strumming pattern and it will make your playing sound much better. Okay, so let's begin. Now, the first thing I want to show you is this new chord, the G chord. Um, I think you'll find it straightforward. It's the middle finger on the sixth string at fret 3, um, the first finger on the fifth string of fret 2, and then these two fingers, um, the, the third finger goes on the second string at fret 3, and the little finger goes right next to it on the first string at fret 3. So if you just want to look at that chord diagram next to me, just to ca clarify what those notes are, and you're going to use the plectrum to strum all the strings. <laughs> Now, you should know by now, if you remember me telling you in the last lesson, that you should be arching these fingers up and there should be plenty of space underneath. And, you know, you should be holding down with lots of pressure and the back of the finger shouldn't be accidentally touching the string behind it. So that when you strum all the, all the notes, it should sound like this. Nice and clean and clear. Um, so if you need to practice that for a second, you know, by all means, pause the video and just make sure you got that right. So this strumming pattern, um, so we're going to strum downwards, and then upwards, and then we're going to do this chop. Right, so let me explain that now. Now what the chop is, is we're going to use the palm of our hand to touch all the strings like this. And what happens is, our hand comes, the palm touches all the strings, and then the plectrum follows through. But because we're touching the strings, all the notes are muted, like that. Now you shouldn't be able to hear any notes at all. If you can hear anything like that, then you need to make sure you're holding down on those strings with more pressure. And they should be totally dead. So that'll take a little bit of practice. And eventually you can bring your hand down and chop all in one motion like that. Okay, so just to clarify, I'll tell you again, make sure that the palm of your hand is laying across all those strings and effectively, you know, killing the notes. Okay, so what happens is, you're going to practice it until you can do it like that, nice and smooth, all in one motion. Okay, so that's the chop, that's how it works. So when we put that into the strumming pattern, we're going to go down, up, chop and then up again. So it sound like this. Now, it's easier said than done. I, I expect that will take you quite a bit of time to practice that. I mean, I know it takes my students quite a while before they really get the hang of it. So that's brilliant. So go easy on yourself. That you know, don't, don't give yourself any pressure to be able to play that straight away. Um, be patient with yourself. Stop the video. In fact, watch the video several times if you need to. That's fine. Okay, so, and also once you've practiced that, you can apply it to the other chords that you know. You can do it on the E chord. 
the A and the D. And you're at a stage now that you can start experimenting with these chords and you can begin to, you know, um, create your own sequences and start writing your own songs. And as you learn more and more chords, then you'll be able to write more and more interesting songs. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. I, I want you to practice the G chord as well as practicing the three other chords that we learned before. Um, and I want you to practice that strumming pattern, the down, up, chop, up. And go and get on with that and really dedicate yourself to it. You know, make sure you can really, really do it smoothly. Okay, and I'll see you in a few days for the next segment of this e-course. Um, we're going to learn something a little bit different. We're going to move away from chords and we're going to learn um, what's called the blues scale. And I'm going to begin to teach you how to improvise. So it's all going to get more exciting from here on in. So thanks for joining me. Go and get on with that. Go and begin practicing right now. And also, if you want to go and look at the website and check out the archive and see if there's any songs you want to learn, because if you're brave enough to sort of, you know, go and tackle those now, then that would be brilliant. And you can start to build a repertoire of songs that you can play to people, you know, play at parties or whatever. So, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in a few days.